Welcome to Pawpaw's Workshop. In this video today, we're going to be unboxing, assembling, and doing the first engrave with this new Sculfin S9 laser. Let's get started. This new laser comes boxed very, very neatly, and it comes with everything that you need to be able to assemble it. Now, rather than do the traditional box opening, I just went ahead, got everything out, laid it out on the table so you could see exactly what comes with this. And it does come in a very nice, concise kit. The screws are in its own little package for each step. And there's basically four steps to be able to assemble this brand new Sculptfun S9 laser. And what I like best about it is not only is it super easy to be able to assemble, I like the laser itself being a very ultra fine, thin, thin beam. Now these parts are clearly labeled. So there's no guesswork on this either. You've got the front, you've got the right, of course you have the back and the left side. The packages for the screws are also individually packed for each step. So it gives you a list of the screws that are in it and it breaks it down step by step when you compare it to the manual. This makes assembling this new laser extremely easy to be able to do. So I'm just going to start with step one and we're going to move through. But you can see on step two it does the same exact thing and the same thing with the next package. On step four you need some screws and they're right there for you. Exactly what you need. There's no chance of being able to lose them, misplace them, drop them on the floor. But if you do, you do have a spare package and they give you some extra screws. To start the assembly, I want you to point out on these legs, they have these little slotted type screws. So that gives you the opportunity to be able to make sure that the machine is square. Now on the rods themselves, granted that it is tapped and drilled already, so it makes being able to assemble this very easily. But you do need to make sure that it's square. And after I assemble this portion of it by just putting in the screws in their designated location, we're going to be able to show you exactly how to make sure that the frame is exactly square. On the rod, you need to make sure that you have this oriented correctly. Here you have two holes that's threaded, and you need to make sure that's rotated so that you can put these in correctly into the little foot. As I put the four feet on and connect all these rods together to form the frame, I am not tightening anything. Everything is very loose fit at this point, and that's by design. As I put this together, I want to make sure that everything fits together correctly, and it's a lot easier to make those small adjustments when everything is loose. Then, once it's all assembled, then I'm going to go ahead and get this square. But first, we've got to put the gantry on. So I want to have this back assembled, and then we're going to go ahead and put the gantry on, and then we'll put the front bar into it. Now when I put the front bar on, you're going to notice I have one foot that's on the left-hand side, and on the other side is actually the foot is built into the controller itself. So that becomes part of the foot. Now again, I'm just loosely tightening the screws at this point. Please do not tighten them. Once we have it all assembled, you do not have a square machine. You're going to measure diagonally from one corner to the opposite corner and see what that measurement is. And then you will do the same thing going in the other direction. You want this number to be exactly the same. If it's not, you want to be able to squeeze just a little bit on the long side to be able to get it where those two numbers are exactly the same. And then verify and make sure. Once you have it exactly square, then you can go ahead and tighten up all the different screws. And don't forget, check one more time after you tighten all the screws just to make sure that it is in fact still square. Well, the hard part's done, getting the frame assembled. Next, we're going to go ahead and put the belts on. Now, there's two belts, and they're pre-cut, so there's no measuring, no cutting. You don't need to do any of that. All you need to be able to do is just feed them through on each side on the Y entry. Now, they have that little slot at the top of that screw, and it just literally slips through the hole. It's just that easy. And you're going to do this, of course, on both sides. 
Now the next part's just a little bit tricky because I've got some big old fat fingers, but I just used this little hook and lifted this belt up. Now the belt goes under that little V-wheel and it comes up and over the sprocket. And then goes right back down and underneath the wheel again. It's not hard at all and I found moving the gantry forward when it's under that second V-wheel makes it real easy to be able to get access to the end of that belt. Now I'm not having a belt attached to the sprocket yet. Leave that still loose. But you can go ahead and slide the belt all the way through and be able to put it right out that back slot. Now I'm doing the same thing again on the other side where I'm just sliding that belt through underneath the V-wheel up and over that little sprocket. Drop it right back down and under the other V-wheel. This is not difficult at all but it does take just a little bit of work. And if you're like me, the big fat fingers have a tendency to get into the way. But you can move that gantry forward and back just a little bit and that is surprisingly helps that a lot. To secure these belts is very, very simple. This is probably the most simple technique that I have ever seen in a laser. It has this little T-nut with the screw and the T-nut just literally drops into the slot pushes down on the belt and when you tighten that, it tightens the belt. And you want to go ahead and do this on the one end and that way it's nice and tight and you got just a little bit of extra belt hanging out. That's okay. Once you do that on both sides, then we're going to move to the back and we're going to go ahead and get everything adjusted. Now one more time, you can see where I'm just dropping this T-nut right down on top of the belt and then just push down with just a little bit of pressure and tighten it. Now let's go ahead and move to the back because I want to move this gantry all the way to the rear because that's important before you put the belt down on the sprocket. That will ensure that the gantry is square to the frame of your machine. And at this point you can go ahead and pull on each of the belts and make sure that it's seated right down into the sprocket and you've got it nice and square. Then you're gonna do the same thing. Grab that little screw and that little T-nut and you'll be able to put tension on the belt and tighten it down and secure it. So how do you know how tight to make the belts? Well, the easiest way to be able to do it with a laser like this is just raise up the back of the machine and the gantry should slowly slide down, moving to the front. If it doesn't move at all, the belts are too tight. If it goes down really, really fast, tighten the belts. That's the easiest, simplest way. It is not rocket science and it does not have to be complicated. I want you to notice that this Z-axis, see how much movement there is? Far too much movement. We have to be able to adjust that. Now these are set up where there are two V-wheels on each side and there's a third one underneath. Now these are fixed. They are not adjustable, so you need to have those tight. But underneath you have a third one and there's a little eccentric nut right there that you can just tighten and you can get that adjustment and that play or that slop will go away. Once you have that all tightened and adjusted, then you can go ahead and tighten that wheel down and you have the adjustment done. Now the same exact technique works for each end of the gantry should you need to be able to adjust that. On mine, I didn't need to. So now I would just want to go ahead and move on to the laser. Now on the laser you have this little shield that helps protect your eyes. And on each side of it you have a little two set screws. So just open up the little set screw and then you can put this shield right down on there and secure it in place. And you also notice in the kit you actually have a separate shield. So should you ever lose one or get one damaged for whatever reason, you have a spare. I think this is the first laser that I've ever received an extra shield. Kind of nice. Hopefully I'll never need it, but it's nice to know that I have it. The two small set screws hold it very well and that will keep it in place. At this point, all we need to be able to do is slide this onto the gantry now. And it has two screws on the back side where you can just tighten it and be able to make the adjustments necessary when you're getting ready to do the engraving. And this is a very proven, simple method that has been used on a number of the different types of the designs. 
The last thing I want to be able to show you are these little rubber pads. This will help keep the laser from being able to move around. And the simplest way that I've ever been able to uh, put these on is just literally flip them over and set the laser right down on top of it, right in the center. And that way you can just push down, it secures it to the bottom of the foot, and then just lift up on each side and secure it in place. Now again, this is the simplest method that I have found. However, if you know of an easier way to be able to put these little feet on, then let me know. I'm always willing to learn a different way to be able to do it, but for me, this has worked out extremely well. So again, just push down just slightly, and then on each side, push it up onto the foot, and that holds it in place. And these actually do better than I ever expected to keep this machine from sliding. The wiring harness is next, and it is completely pre-assembled, attached to the control board already. You don't have to do anything on that end. The first connection that I'm making is to the stepper motor, and it just simply plugs in. And then I come over on the x-axis, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'll plug this connector in. You do have to orient it correctly, but again, you really can't mess that up because there's only one way it will plug in. And then the third connection is right down on the laser. Once you have this plugged in, the wiring is done. I think that's pretty simple and straightforward. There's nothing extra that you have to do other than now, Let's make sure that those wires are not going to get into the way. So we'll use these zip ties and secure it in place. And of course, the zip ties are included in this kit. So you don't have to worry about anything extra. They are provided. So I have one zip tie right above the laser itself. And then over here at the end of the gantry, right by the Y stepper motor, I'm attaching a second zip tie. And that way I know that this cables are going to be out of the way. And then I'll just simply clip off the ends of the zip tie and the cables are secure and they'll be out of the way of the engraving area. Now these belts, they're a little bit long. Leave them long. Don't go cutting this off. Should you ever need to adjust the tension of the belt, it's a whole lot easier to be able to have some belt to grab hold to to be able to make that adjustment. Now let's go ahead and plug in the USB cable and the power supply. And we're ready to be able to do the first engrave. What I thought I would do is just go over to the Google search and find the logo for the Sculpin S9 laser. And by scrolling down, sure enough, I found it pretty quick. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click on this. I'll right click on the image and I'm gonna bring it directly into the Lightburn software. And I'll just go ahead and hit paste and there's the logo. Now I want to be able to go ahead and do the trace image. So I come up to the tools menu, come down to trace image. That is the image there. And I have the threshold. I can move this up to make sure that I capture the entire logo. And then I'm going to click OK. So the trace image part is done. I'll slide it over out of the way and I'm not going to need the rest of this. I went ahead and put this as a fill right now so you could easily see it because it comes in as the line. Next, I'm bringing in a square. I'm going to set this square up at 4 inches by 4 inches. And the reason I'm doing that is that is the size of the plywood that I'm going to use as the test engrave. And by having that square there on the correct size, then I can scale the logo down to exactly to fit into that space. And I don't have to worry about having anything engraving off of my piece of plywood. I went ahead and typed out the word Sculfin S9. We'll scale that back down so it will fit in there also. And you can see right now that first one was still too large. So I just scaled it down a little bit so it all fits. Now I know that it's going to be engraving right at that point. I went ahead and set it for the bold text. I like that better. And as far as the settings, I just went ahead and set this up where it's going to be engraving at the 80 inches per minute and about 60% power. This is a little bit guessed now because I know this laser is very, very efficient with this ultra thin beam. Next, I went ahead and framed it. I wanted to frame it 
when it was still high and I could see exactly where it was going to go. Now I want to go ahead and set the Z height and I have this 20 millimeter gauge. I just simply lower the laser down right down to the point where it touches it, then I tighten the screws on the back. So the Z height is done. You will also notice that that little shield is right down on the surface. It protects about 98% of the light. I recommend wearing the glasses, but they say that you can do the engraving without having the glasses on because this does block 98% of the light. Well, from my standpoint, wear the glasses. The engraving on this is doing an outstanding job. It's beautiful, it's clear, and it's sharp. Now I'm going to be doing some additional tests with this laser as I do additional videos, but this one's getting a little bit long. Should you want to investigate this further, you can go to the Banggood site and be able to look at this laser. Now I will have a link in the description that will take you directly to the Banggood site for this Sculpin S9 laser. This is a great entry-level laser that I think anybody would love to be able to have in their workshop. I want to thank everybody for watching today and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Uh, this is a great addition to any shop.